Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the start of another weekly vlog. Hi, it's me, Fox. Welcome back to my allergies and my water bottle. Every morning's joy here at Fox Manor. Um, how's everybody doing? Uh, my allergies. I don't think how swollen my fucking sinuses are today. So it's Thursday. I did not kick this off yesterday because I was in the real shit mood. Yesterday was like really rough. Bad day at work. Bad, bad day at work. So busy. So just crazy. So, um, not that I'm feeling any better today, but my allergies are really bad. We got really high winds yesterday. So I tried to go for a little run last night after work and I just like, I don't know, any, any miles were good miles last night. So I just did a 30 minute run. Um, I'm feeling real beat up today, <laughs> but we had really high winds last night and now we're having a pressure change because it was warm and it's now down to 23 degrees and snow is coming in tonight. Now it's not supposed to be too much. Originally they were saying six to eight inches, which was like, please, I don't need that. Um, but now they're just saying like one to three inches. So not a whole ton, but like the change of like air systems. So this is like really puffy right now. So I'm gonna take my allergy medicine. <sighs> been up for about an hour just reading scrolling Facebook and Instagram and snuggling with my dog I don't know I gotta get get everything right I gotta get right with my brain it's just not going well I had to come in here because I heard some puppy tears hi what's going on are you stuck on the bed can you not get off the bed because there's a pillow on the floor is that the story if that pillow wasn't there you'd be able to get up you want mommy to move the pillow do you think that would help you're not sure I understand put the pillow on the bed are you able to get up now yeah. do you think you can yeah. you're still not sure what do you think, huh? What do you think? Oh my goodness, come on. Can you do it? Can you do it? No, you still can't. Because now the pillow's next to you, huh? The pillow's terrifying, huh? Do you want me to move the pillow? Oh my goodness. Okay, now can you go? I moved it all the way over there. No? Still can't. Oh my goodness. It's a winter wonderland. Not too much snow yet, but it's really starting to come down. Hi everybody. It's Thursday night. I'm so tired and I feel really mentally bad. And it's snowing and I have to work. It took me 40 minutes to get home from work tonight, and it's normally like a 10 minute or less drive. Um, and it's gonna be snowing until like seven tomorrow morning, so I have to drive in, and who knows what the roads are gonna look like, so I'm just in bad headspace. It's 10 after nine. I've just been like, I got home at 7.40, and I've just been like laying around unable to function. So I'm going to do a Richard Simmons tape tonight instead of well, I can't run because, I mean, I could run. It's snowing, though. I don't want to fall and hurt myself a week before I'm supposed to be on vacation. Um, and I don't feel like doing a bar blend. So I'm going to do a Richard Simmons tape and see if that cheers me up. I, I haven't eaten anything. I'm just not in a good place right now. And I don't feel like it's getting better. So, Richard Simmons it is. Hello, everybody. Update. I did my Richard Simmons tape and I did the full 30 minutes. It was like, I'm going to start with 10 minutes. And then I was like, oh, I can go for 15. And then I was like, well, I'm almost to 20 by the time I check my watch again. Oh, boy, I was like so tired of my nonsense. <laughs> um, and then I was like, well, I might as well just go the full 30. So I did. And I did the Boogie Down with Pounds tape, which is one of my favorites. That's the one the husband always used to do with me. He did not do it to me. He did not join me for Richard Simmons tonight, regrettably. Um, but it did make me feel a little bit better. I felt like pretty strong and I just love that and I love Richard and he's like so inspiring and like makes you feel good about yourself. So 
Um, we're in bed. Husband brought me this book I'm reading. There's my Pooh Bear. There's my dog. Husband just made us like chicky patties and tater tots and he just brought it up. I had some dinner in bed and now I'm gonna read a little bit more and Layla Grace and then I are gonna go to sleep. She's already asleep. She buried her face even further. So anyway, it's um, it kind of stopped snowing for a little while so I don't know what we'll wake up to but we shall see. I will, I will show you the snow in the morning to see. But anyway, that's the update. I'm just feeling so tired, just so tired, emotionally, spiritually, physically, just so tired. So I'll check in tomorrow. Good morning. We got snow. Doesn't look like a whole lot though. So that's good. It's really cold. Oh my God, I can see my breath out here. Don't mind all my boxes to go out to recycling today. We were cleaning. Wow, look at that. Hi everybody, it's Saturday night. And now our show begins live from my house. Um, I'm going for a run. I only have three miles. Everything's a little icy. I'm a little tired. I want to try to remember to check in and update you on the shit show that is my life right now. But I'm going to go and run and hopefully not fall on ice and break anything. Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday morning. Later than I wanted to be up, but I was just like doom scrolling as usual. Sunday morning I work 11 to 5 today um, however I don't have a tech today because my tech is today's her last day of vacation she comes back tomorrow so I'm by myself today I have at least 22 or 24 shots scheduled by myself now Sundays that's a lot of time Sundays um we usually around like two o'clock from two to five it's kind of slows down so that part of the day will be okay but getting through to that part of the day not so good so i am um, planning to go in like about an hour earlier so just to get a start on the day and see where we go we got we were had made really good progress yesterday the store was really in good shape when i left and it was like pouring outside so little miss is in her raincoat and she's not happy she wanted to go outside so badly and she came right back. You ready? Oh, did you bump into the door? <laughs> Look how soaked she is. She was only out there for like a minute. Come here, sweetie. Come here, I'm gonna take your raincoat off. Good girl. That's a good girl. I know. It's yucky outside. It's yucky outside, huh? Oh, poor baby. So anyway, um, yeah. <sighs> we should be, we're like, I'm in the best shape that I could be going into today, but that doesn't mean it's good shape, you know? I don't, it is, like, I heard it's icy out right now, like lots of black ice. Um, the sun is supposed to be coming out a little bit. It's going to warm up a little bit in the next hour or two. So, if worse comes to worst, I will just, like, go in at my regular time and just suffer through it. And hope that because it's, like, crappy out, people won't come in as much. Um, we'll see. You can't really stay late tonight because I have to run. So that was part of what happened. I was like having so much anxiety about running this weekend and fitting it in with my work schedule and everything being so crazy right now. And I'm just so, so tired after I leave work every day. And so I had a call with my coach on Friday night. And so she actually switched my mileage around. So I was supposed to do 24 miles today and the original plan had been to do 12 miles before work and then 12 miles after work. And I was, when I looked at the weather and I saw like, maybe icy, maybe just really cold and rainy. I was like, I really don't want to put myself out in the cold rain, especially. And well, ice is like the given, you don't want to be running in ice. That's like the one condition that makes you go treadmill. Yeah, ice. Um, I keep switching arms because I'm talking too long. <laughs> it's making my arms sore. Um, so, yeah, so I was like, I don't know what to do. So what she did was she was like, you're really handling the mileage increases very well. I don't really think we need to be like, she's like, I don't think you need to do a ton more miles than you're doing. I mean, I'm going to do, obviously do 50K training run on at the end of the month, um, like a month before my uh, big race. So 
she said, let's do this week as a cutback. Now that I have, now that I'm working every other Sunday, she's gonna put me more back on like a up and down instead of we were doing like one week up, one week up, one week down, one week up, one week up, one week down. So we're gonna do more of like an up and down week to week thing to accommodate my work schedule. Now, if it was summer, it would be much easier because I just start running at 6 a.m. and be done at 10 a.m. and like go to work, it'll be fine. Um, and then I could run after work because it would be daylight, but of course I chose a February race. Forgetting that I am now no longer winter. When I first started running, I was a winter runner and I hate it. I would not run in the summer at all. I would run in the winter and I didn't care how cold it was. I'd be like, I'm fine. And then I got like used to the feeling of everything flopping around in the summer. Like that's the thing that feels gross in summer. You're so sweaty and you're like wearing like smaller amounts of clothing because it is so hot. And so I felt like very self-conscious. And once I was like, who cares if I'm a chubby runner? Like it's fine. Um, then I became a summer runner and I never looked back and now I hate winter running. So, and I hate the treadmill. I will not do the treadmill. I can't do the treadmill right now cause it's torn down and it's in our uh, guest room right now until the floors are done. The good news is on Monday, we should have a date for when the floors are going in. And then next weekend, if I get to go on my trip, husband is gonna do the painting in there. So that'll be nice too. <sighs> okay, so. I have 10 miles to run after work tonight. Today at work is gonna be a disaster. Then I have two more days and then all things going according to plan. I'll be on a plane Wednesday morning to Palm Springs. All things going to plan. But I wanted to talk to you about how fucking bad I'm feeling right now. Aren't you excited to hear this? I can't find lighting that doesn't make me look like really washed out right now. But I probably am really washed out because it's not going well with my life. So you can enjoy this over here. Part of why it's not going well. It's hard for me to focus at all with this going on. I know this is temporary and we thought it was going to be the end of the month. But like I said, they called... Friday and said they're gonna let us like they're gonna call us back Monday to schedule a time so that's exciting um but that's part of it it's just like I, I can't like there's a pathway can you see this there's this little tiny whoa, this little tiny pathway here that's like the only way you get in and out of this room right now because it's so packed and you can't even get into the guest room and I have stuff in the closet there that I need because I have like a, uh, an Amazon return for Kohl's So that's adding to my stress. Work has just been, it's been so much. I was chatting with a friend of mine who was filling in at the store like near mine on Friday and she was like, this is insane. And I was like, I know it's insane because like our two stores only have like one tech and same thing, she has a tech out at that store and she was just filling, she, the tech and the pharmacist are out at that store. So she was filling in there, had no tech all day and that's like happens to me all the time and then a tech came in halfway through her shift so she had a tech for half of it for like three hours um and she was like this is too much she's like we, we can't answer the phone we can't do any of the inventory projects we can't do like anything that we're supposed to do the only thing there's time for is ringing the register answering like questions about people wanting to know if we have rapid test which we don't everybody sold out almost all the time there will be like a one hour period randomly once a week where seven tests appear and then seven tests are gone in like 20 minutes or an hour yeah so i was chatting with her which is kind of nice to like talk to somebody else. i mean like reed who is as you all know is my work husband we've been chatting um his situation's a little bit different because he is like filling in an area that is just underwater completely and so like the fact that he shows up and is a body and is like competent, they are like, they love it. And so, and he's a floater though. So at the end of the day, he doesn't have to worry if there's bad scores, not his problem. I, that's why I loved floating for so many years. And if I had been able to keep seven on seven off schedule and float, I'd be doing that. So anyway, anyway, although I do like being done earlier, a lot of our stores are open till, most of them are open till eight or nine. And I do like that my store closes at seven. Not ex it's that extra hour sucks compared to being closed at six, like I was for two and a half years. But anyway, 
what my friend and I were talking about on Friday was just like how it's, it's really draining our ability to do fun things when we get home or like do things that we enjoy. Like she was like, I'm finally taking some time to read today. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, when I get home, I'm like, when I'm at work, I'm like, oh, I just can't wait to get home. I'm going to put on my jammies. I'm going to pour a glass of wine. I'm going to light some candles and just sit down and relax and write in my journal and just like listen to some good music and just kind of like unwind. And when I get home every night, I, I can't. I can't. I come in and I sit down and I go, well, I have to work out. Well, I have to do like, and I'm only doing, if I'm not running, like if I'm running, I'm running however many miles it is. So like last night I only ran three miles, but because it was so snowy, it took me like 50, a little over 50 minutes because like I had to like keep going off the snow into the road and then going off the road into the snow and like switching back and forth to where, where there was less ice. Um, cause there, there were some slick spots last night on the sidewalks for sure. So do you love, can you tell what I do for a living? This was, this box made it all the way from when I was an intern to Los Angeles and back this one right here. <laughs> Good times. I just come home and I'm like, I just like sit there and scroll social media or TikTok. And then I finally like talk myself into doing something. And then by that point it's like nine o'clock. And then we have to eat dinner. And so we eat dinner and then I go right to bed. That's what I'm doing every night, like every night. And Elizabeth was saying the same thing that like, she just doesn't have time for like anything. Like we were saying like any of the things that we use to manage our stress in a normal time to like rebuild ourselves and recharge ourselves. We are so drained from work right now that we don't have the ability to do those things. And it really sucks. And we were talking about how like, when this, this will happen with flu season a lot because we do get bombarded with flu shots and, but the most common time, like it starts in August and it kind of ramps up a little bit through September and it's like October, November, it's just flu shot, flu shot, flu shot. Or well, I guess like the last two weeks of September, all of October and the first two weeks of November. So basically like two months of like really intense flu shots, sometimes a little longer, but you always know, like if we can make it to Thanksgiving, this is going to settle down this is temporary and you plan for it every year. The thing with doing these like massive amounts of COVID vaccines is that there is no end in sight. Like we have to keep up this intensity indefinitely. And that's what I have a hard time. If I can have something to look forward to and be like, okay, we just got to get through this. But like she was making the comment too, like why are none of the big, when we first, when the vaccine first came out and like when well, it was first available widely, like so February and March, it started coming out. Like in January, we were just doing the nursing home clinics. It was like healthcare workers in nursing homes was their first focus. Cause that's where the main, the deaths were happening in the nursing homes. And if we don't have the healthcare workers, then we can't take care of the sick patients. So that was the priority when the vaccines first came out and there was limited supply. Once we got through all of that, then it was open to the general public and it was really hard to get a vaccine in the first couple of months. So like husband had to drive two and a half hours away. My store never got it until I think we got started getting vaccines in May, maybe. Um, so he, I, I couldn't even have him come to my store. So he ended up driving like two and a half hours to Bedford, which is like a haul for his shots. People were driving like to St. Mary's, which is like almost three hours, like just crazy stuff. But that was all you could do. But they started doing these massive clinics. So like at our uh, PNC Park, which is our ballpark where the Pirates play. And then Heinz Field, which is where the Steelers play. The convention center, I wanna say. Like all these like big locations, they were doing these huge clinics. And that was amazing because they could do like hundreds or thousands of people. I don't know how many shots there were each day, but it was like a ton of people. And so that really took the burden off the pharmacies. Like it balanced it better. And my friend was like, why are we not doing the big clinics? Like, why is it all falling on the pharmacies when we're not getting any extra help? It's not like, like there are a few stores that get an extra immunizer, but most stores don't. We're considered like, they call it workflow. So it goes into your regular workflow, like your flu shots would. And the, there are a few stores that are getting a nurse um, or like an intern or somebody who can immunize to do just immunizations from 10 to seven every day during the week. Um, but the majority of us are not those stores. And so it's like, 
it just doesn't seem to be an end in sight. And she's like, why are they not doing those clinics to get these? Like, they keep saying it's so important to get boosters. It's so important to get boosters. Why are these not sites not opening? And I wonder if it's just staffing that they're just, they don't have anybody. But you know what? If they would be able to, like, pay other healthcare practitioners, like, I know I would do it. I would take a day and go and vaccinate for a whole day for, you know, as, like, a contract worker. Heck yeah, so many of us would. Like, this is important, and we all want to be part of, we all want to be doing this. We all want to be vaccinating people, because we all want to get through this, okay? And this is what we do. We help people. That's our job. And we all want to be doing it, but it's taking such a toll on all of us right now. It's really, really hard. It's really, really hard. So, we've always, like, you know, in pharmacy, we don't really get sick days. Now, we've gotten sick days since COVID started, but it's always been, like, a not a joke, but like, you know, an understood thing that like, oh, pharmacists don't take sick days. And we don't, we don't. We just always go to work because you have to have somebody to open the store. And you, I know healthcare workers probably across the board are all feeling like this right now. Anybody who is dealing with the public right now probably feels like the same thing. Like, yes, I'm giving all that I can at work. And so because I'm doing that, the part of me that's suffering is the home part. And so I'm really feeling down about this. I am feeling like I don't, I haven't even been working on my, I didn't even get my power sheets yet. I did like the prep work this, you know, for the start of the, for the whole year, but I didn't do my January attending list yet, which is like normally January. I'm like fired up and excited, but I just am feeling down and feeling hopeless. I'm feeling like I'm never going to get out of this. Like we're going to have to keep up this intensity it's like finals week. Okay. Remember how shitty you felt during finals week and you were like, I just have to get through this week and then I can sleep. It's like finals week, but it's been finals week for almost two years with the exception of like, let's say June through August, 2021. Those were, those were some nice months when numbers were really low. We had a day where we had zero cases Everybody was vaccinated. The boosters weren't out yet. So everybody was feeling really good. And then, and then Delta arrived. Thanks, Delta. Fuck you. And then we were getting boosters. So it was like, okay, this will work against Delta. And then Omicron arrived. And fuck you, Omicron. And it's just, so what's next? The feeling in healthcare right now is, this sucks. This is taking a real toll on my mental health. And what's next? That's how we're all feeling right now. So, um, I haven't edited any videos this week. I feel like I've barely checked in on the vlog. Like this is going to be a weird vlog when I go down to edit it. Um, and I'm, I'm planning this trip on Wednesday, which is like three days away. So you would think I'm like, yeah, three days until vacation. I got to get ready. I am not touching any single thing until I make it to Tuesday night after work and don't have COVID. Like, I just am so, I'm so like paranoid right now. I sort of wearing an N95 at work all the time again. And like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we're going backwards in some ways and I'm like, just get me to the desert where the only people I'm interacting with are jackalopes and rattlesnakes. Hopefully no rattlesnakes. They're really cool. If you've ever seen a rattlesnake like in the desert when you're hiking or running or something, you're like, whoa, they're really cool. But you like, everybody says, just leave them alone and they'll leave you alone. But there's this level of distrust because sometimes they look at you and think and you're like, I'm leaving you alone. And they're like, but are you? Are you really? So, um, it's like exciting, but like also, so anyway, I hope it's just see mostly jackalopes, maybe big horn sheep. Okay. So I did book, here's a good thing. I booked a stargazing tour for Thursday night. It is in Hidden Valley, which is about, um, uh, maybe 40, 40 ish minutes, 35 or 40 minutes from where I'm staying. It's at 7 p.m. because it gets dark early right now. So I think I'm going to go into the park and maybe like try to see sunset at Keys View because I've never done that even though everybody says that's the one thing you have to do. It gets really crowded. 
January, maybe not crowded, but I am going to try to do that. And then maybe I'm going to bring like a picnic lunch. Maybe I'll get like takeout and I'll just sit under the stars and have my lunch or no, that's dinner. What meal happens after dark? Um, and then seven o'clock is the stargazing tour at seven to 9 PM. So I'm pretty excited about that. I was really nervous to book it cause I was like, but I don't want the slots to fill up and I miss out on it. So it's a guided stargazing. They have like telescopes set up. It's like, um, uh, I don't know if it's amateur astronomers because someone said somebody that was there was like does does work some kind of related um, related to astronomy kind of job. So I guess it depends on who your tour guide is. But they're gonna set up telescopes and like uh, just give us blankets to sit under the stars. It's probably gonna be about forty degrees at seven o'clock at night. But all this winter running has prepared me. So anyway, I gotta stop talking and fucking try to do something before I have to leave for work. I'm looking outside, there's like an icicle that's gonna murder a person outside. Absolutely. Like, yeah, that's gonna murder somebody by the end of the day. So, uh, but it's on a power line, so I don't even know if like you can knock it off or will you get electrocuted? I don't know. So anyway, thanks for listening to me and my struggles. I hope that I come back to myself soon. I think at least the week in the desert, I will be myself again for the week in the desert. Um, but I hope I can carry that back with me when I'm back home. So I'll try to check in later today after work. I, like I said, I have a 10 mile run. I think I'm going to run like around here and then run into shady side in Oakland because those, um, those roads have businesses. So they're often better. The sidewalks are better treated. So we'll see. It's going to get cold again tonight overnight. Um, like when I'm running, it said it's going to be 35, but it's going to be like a real feel of 25 or something like that. It's going to be I guess maybe windy. We'll see. Last night it was like so crystal clear on my run, and I was like, oh my god, the stars are out. And I could see Orion. We have, Orion is like big in the East Coast, especially in the winter time. And it was like, ba -ba! like in the summertime, you can see Cassiopeia very well in this part of the realm. Um, but in the wintertime, it's all Orion, like winter and then like early spring. So it was like right up there, like right over the trees. I was in the park. It was really nice. So see, there's a couple good things. I felt really good about my run last night. Running in the snow is like really fun. As long as you're not like paranoid that you're going to fall. Um, and as long as you take the time to slow down, running in the snow is very fun. So I did have a good run, even though it was like pathetic. Like I could have walked that fast. I could, we, when we do our three mile walks, it takes us like 50 minutes, <laughs> but Anyway, I'm going to sign off here and I will check in later. Thanks for listening to me. I am feeling a little bit better now that I have talked through the drama that is my life. Hi, everybody. It's Sunday night. I survived my day at work. I look gross right now. It is so cold. <sighs> I'm a little under a mile and a half from the end of my run. I only did 10 miles tonight, which is more than enough for how my body is feeling. <laughs> So work actually went pretty okay for the most part. People were pretty like, whoa, dude, you're all by yourself. Are you okay? And I was like, yeah. So for the most part, people were understanding. But now on the run, coming up a hill, I'm gonna suddenly Finley Park Golf Course. I think that's like the clubhouse where the rich people go and have hamburgers. Oh my god. I'm a combination of sweaty and real cold. Oh, it's a beautiful like night to look at. Um, I'll turn you around. I don't know if you'll really see anything. No, you really can't. Yeah, got some cool, creepy clouds. We got a plane with a trail. That's the moon, which is the word for. Uh, whoop, I gotta cross with that one. Okay. Oh, I wanna say it's mostly downhill. We still got a little bit more uphill to go. You see in front of me here. This is. Oh, connecting the park with the Forbes Avenue. 
the Forbes Avenue, not just any Forbes Avenue. Um, so when I came up the last time I did this route, I did this maybe a week ago, two weeks, I don't give a fuck now. Oh my goodness. It's like my, my mouth is so cold, it's hard to talk. So, last time I did this, I did the climb up Forbes, and it was miserable, and there's like no street lights for a big stretch of it. Not that there's like terrific lighting in here, but much less going on. So like you have a wider berth to take up space. And I have my headlamp. As you can see, my vest is dying. So that's the way that you can come up where that car's coming up. And you would continue on this way though. Um, much steeper, less fun. Right choice was to take the park. I said you could see, but you probably don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So this is a Knox gear vest, um, lighted vest. Our whole crew wears them for night runs, especially because we run like city streets a lot and good visibility. Um, there's a variety of colors that you can choose it to be. However, when it starts to get low battery, and it does give you some good warning, so it may last me until I'm home. Not super worried. I was worried about getting through the park. And now that I'm on, I'll be on sidewalks the rest of the way and I'll be like in the business district pretty soon. Um, this is a heavily trafficked area, but it's a big sidewalk. So oh, this is the other hill that I was talking about. So when your battery gets to a certain point of lowness, it automatically turns red. And as you can see, it's blinking intermittently to let me know, change the batteries when you get home. So I think it's gonna last me, but I have a headlamp on as well. But I'm getting into an area that's like pretty well lit now, suddenly. So you can see the lighting behind me. This is like residential here. So it's like a hearty nine o'clock. I left way later than I planned. And the beginning areas had some really slick spots still. So the truth about this is it was like a warm rain all day. And then it got it dried up. So most of the snow melted, but in some areas where there was like a big chunk of it, it started to melt, did not succeed in melting, and is now ice. So beginning was a little slower going down the hill. And also when it's cold like this, okay, fellow runners watching this, when it's cold and you're out running, do you do you feel someone is singing? I thought they were talking to a religious singing. Um, do you feel like the cold settles into your quads and your legs like become insanely heavier? Because that's how I feel. I'm not a fan. So good practice for the frigid 50k coming up in two weeks. Check how spooky this is. Ooh, spooky. I don't know what that is. This is, I think, oh, it's some kind of temple or church or something or monastery, friary. Look, your girl's gonna have to Google it when she gets home and put it up on the screen here, but it looks really cool after dark. Okay, downhill's coming and I must run. Put my podcast back on. I did turn my podcast off when I was in the park because I wanted to be able to hear anything. And yeah, I'm gonna put that back on. I'm listening to like four hours of You're Wrong About which I'm really interested in this podcast now. I'm starting from the beginning, going through all their old episodes. I'll check in when I'm home. Good evening, humans. It's Monday night. I just had one of the worst days I've had at work. And I know I keep saying that, but they keep getting worse. So for my fitness tonight, I'm going to attempt to learn the Adele TikTok dance so that I can do it in the desert.
camera is funny. <laughs> I think I learned it. I really suck at the legs. I do. Um, yeah. I got the hand motions down pretty well. I'm really sweaty. My heart rate is very high, but I am uh, mostly ready to bring TikTok dances to the Salton Sea. I don't know, why am I like this? Hello everyone. As you know, this is our guest room. What you may not know is that all of my travel things I store in this closet. Can you see them? See that bag with the apples on it? That shelf is all my travel items. That is like everything that I use to hold my like makeup and skincare and toothbrushes and medicine. Yes, that is the stuff of Michelangelo that you see. Anyway, the real issue is, do you see that suitcase in the corner with the yellow thing and the tag? That's my suitcase. I don't know whose crutches these are. They were just in the attic. Um, my hair looks a mess because I was like nervously pulling it out of this ponytail on dinner. <sighs> so I have to crawl over there and get it. And I never pack without my mom being here and I don't know how to pack without her. So I'm like, so she just called me and she was like, send email me your list and I'll read you your items and I was like okay mom thank you because I am a toddler yesterday this girl came in she's like 13 or 14 to get her booster shot and she like needed to hold her mom's hand and she's all embarrassed and I was like girl I am almost 40 and you know what I call my mom for everything that's what we do that's what moms are there for and so she's like oh really and I was like yeah it never gets better you're always gonna need your mom anyway are these your crutches? Have they been in my attic for the last 12 to 14 years? Would you like them back? Please come get them. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in. Update, 11.20, I'm mostly done. Um, my mom, sat on the phone with me. I got my suitcase out, as you saw, and I got my travel bags out as well. And my mom helped me. She called on the phone. I sent her my packing list and she called me on the phone and we went over everything together. And I think I'm mostly packed. In the morning, I have to add the tripod and my boots. And then, oh God, that's gonna be, I have, I'm at 44 pounds. I'm trying to think like, what else can I take out of there? But like, not really anything. Like. I don't know. I can always take a carry-on as well because it's just me. I get two bags. F I get two bags free because it's Southwest. I can take a second bag if I need to. Okay. See, this is why I love Southwest. Okay, so that's good to know. Anyway, I'm gonna head to bed. I'm so tired right now. I'm so grateful that my mom stayed on the phone and helped me with that. So, I will. Um, check in again probably tomorrow so I have a couple things that are like in the wash right now the tripods in the car I have to get that out in the morning my phone charger car charger is in the car car charger is in the car and I'm mostly packed I'm so so nervous right now Ugh. I have N95s to the plane and I have like I brought my whole stash of N95s because I was like I don't know I'm gonna need them and I brought regular masks I have hand sanitizer I was gonna bring Lysol wipes Maybe I can put those in my laptop bag. I think I can fly with those in the carry-on. So my laptop bag is huge. So if I want to like stuff an extra like couple flannels or something in there, it's just kind of hard. It's going to be like cold at night. Um, and then like six in the sixties during the day. So it's probably gonna be kind of chilly, but like warm in the sun. Um, Palm Springs will be much warmer. It'll be like 77, I think when I land. So, oh my God. I love traveling, but the, the day before and the packing stresses me out so much. So, anyway, I will check in again soon. Hi, everybody. It is Tuesday night. I'm done with work, <laughs> finally. It's been a rough week, everybody. It's been a rough week, everybody. It's been a really rough week. 
So tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. my flight takes off and I leave for Palm Springs and then Joshua Tree and I am I'm super excited but I'm super nervous because I don't know like the night before a trip and it's not like that good nervous energy like I'm not gonna fall asleep because I'm so excited it's like what did I forget and like I am flying southwest you get two checked bags for free and I'm using both of them even though it's just me traveling this time so my secret shame that I'm going to be taking to I have a laptop case I have my planner bag that has like all my bullet journaling stuff my power sheets because I still haven't filled my power sheets for January so um, I have those two things as my carry-on uh, personal items and then I have my big suitcase and then I have my little like overnight or what's husband's overnighter that I borrowed which is not the same shape as mine they're both like Samsonites but they're slightly different because they only had one of each when I bought them for us this is back when we were like really trying to save money and we're like maybe we can go on a flight and only take a carry-on I would like to remind you that I am taking two bags just myself for four days so the next time that you see me post, if you ever see me post, because I just apparently don't have the time to edit videos anymore, um, it will be from sunny Palm Springs. I'm so excited, but I just, I mostly I worry about like forgetting something or not bringing something that I need that I can't buy. Like Reed was like, well, you know, they do have stores in Palm Springs and Joshua Tree. Like I know they do, but there's some things like like my face wash and my moisturizer and I'm like really particular about my hair dryer I need my stupid fucking whatever it's called it's like this high speed hair dryer that dries it in like five minutes I can't deal without um, and then I have like a couple like running like my shot blocks my protein bars like I buy those online so I don't know if I can like replace them in the grocery stores so I had to bring that's just the whole thing so um, I am staying at my parents' house tonight. Husband dropped me off and I missed my Layla Grace already. Um, and then mom's gonna drive me to the airport tomorrow morning so that husband doesn't have to rearrange his meetings and sit in traffic. Because from my parents' house to the airport is much less trafficy than from our house to the airport. So, anyway, I'm gonna close out this weirdly unwieldy vlog. I don't even know where I'm doing the break or if I'm doing a break between the weeks. I'm gonna have two weeks on this vlog and then try to catch up. That's one of the things I want to do in the desert is like try to catch up on my creative projects. Like I know I want to hike and I want to see all the things but like let's like let's do a mixture of things. So okay take care everybody. Uh, please subscribe if you're new here. I am doing a couple videos a week and I'll be moving forward with that. <laughs> and as always please take care of yourselves and take care of each other and I will see you in my next video.